Hello, busy dads and busy people everywhere. I just wanted to take the time to record a quick video sharing a concept that has really changed my own thinking about my progression within the Busy Dad program and with my burpee training in general. I'm finding that it's been quite a revolutionary new perspective for me and I think it could be very beneficial for all of us and so I wanted to take the time to lay it out a little bit. Now, I owe this concept entirely to my friend Barefoot Burpees. Please, if you haven't already, go check out Barefoot Burpees. I've linked his, his, his channel in the description below. He's a really excellent burpee practitioner, a super friendly and reflective guy. Okay, so you, you all might know if you've been following my channel that I've been having some setbacks in my training recently. My Navy SEALs um, have really been suffering. Two weeks ago, I was hitting numbers like 134 in 20 minutes, um, which is right on the edge of what I can do. Um, but this week, it's just, it's been way, way south of that. The best that I, I managed to rack up this whole week was 125. Um, so nine reps down from two weeks ago, and I've kind of been beating myself up about that. And what Barefoot Burpees proposed is that I think in terms, not of single numbers, but in terms of what I think we can call a zone of peak performance. So your zone of peak performance is going to be centered on a given number, but there's going to be a kind of plus minus range. So let me explain. Okay, so let's say that my zone of peak performance is centered on 130 reps, give or take five reps. Okay, so that would mean then that at the bottom uh, of the zone, the lower end of the zone, we've got 125 reps. And at the higher end of the zone, at the outer edge, we've got 135 reps and in the center we've got 130 okay so that's the zone it's centered on 130 and then we've got a plus or minus five reps okay and so that means that if that's my zone of peak performance then as long as in a given workout i'm landing somewhere between 125 and 135 reps i'm staying within that zone if i go under 125 if i go say to 124 we're going to have to bring the center of the zone down now we're going to center the zone on 129 reps. Um, and if I go over 135 on the other end, say if I hit 136, then we're going to be able to bring the zone up by one rep and we're going to center it on 131. Okay, and so what that means is that our goal should be to ultimately bring up our zone of peak performance. Okay, so to perform reps, to perform workouts that go beyond the current outer limit of the zone. But as long as we are landing within that peak zone, within that 10, 10 rep structure, um, nothing has changed in terms of our zone of peak performance. And so we should be forgiving with ourselves and not get too hung up because variation naturally arises. Even pro athletes with professional coaches and nutritionists have off days in their training. Okay, so we're busy dads, of course, we're gonna have off days too. Okay, but there's off days and there's off days. There's an off day where you're at the lower end of your zone of peak performance, and there's an off day where you've got to bring your zone of peak performance down because you went below the lower limit. And none of the off days that I've been sharing on this channel have, have obliged me to bring my zone of peak performance down. And so that, I find, is a really, really helpful concept for not beating myself up about workouts that aren't kind of right at my PR. Um, I've talked a lot on this channel about constantly looking for PR and I think that that's put a lot of pressure on some people and it's been quite demoralizing for some people. You go through a busy dab workout and you don't hit a PR and you're kind of annoyed at yourself. Well, I think that we should change our perspective and just think in terms of what we want to do is gradually bring the zone of peak performance up. But as long as our workouts land somewhere within that zone, we should be very forgiving with ourselves and still think that we are making progress. Okay. So how should you set your zone of peak performance? Well, I suggest um, the way you should set it, and it should be something dynamic and evolving, is look back over your last two weeks of training on the Busy Dad program, okay? Pick the best Navy SEAL workout or the best six count workout that you did. That's gonna be the upper limit of the zone. Pick the worst workout that you did. That's gonna be the lower limit of the zone. The center of the zone is gonna be equidistant between those two limits, and that's gonna be your zone and you're gonna move forward and you're gonna to attempt to make sure that all of your workouts land within that zone, preferably at the upper end of it. And eventually you're gonna to wanna to try and bring that zone up. And every time you bring that zone up, it's gonna be a PR that's gonna bring it up. 
Okay, but just to say, if you don't bring the zone up, but as long as you're landing within it, you shouldn't be too worried about where your training is going. You shouldn't alter your programming. Okay, things are still probably on track. There's just a little bit of variation, which again is something that happens to all of us, even professional athletes. So that is the concept of a zone of peak performance. I owe it all again to my friend Barefoot Burpees. Um, it's really helping me today think through the various training defeats of last week. And I really hope that for those of you on the Busy Dad program, hitting plateaus or setbacks, it will help you stay calm and self-compassionate um, about those training setbacks because it really is very, very important for consistency not to get dejected. And I think that this concept is going to help us uh, keep our mind where it needs to be. So that's all from me. Take care. See you next time.